Hey guys, uh, just doing a little video about a new arrival today. Uh, this is a uh, Mission X cabinet that's uh, turned up, which is uh, going to get a transformation done to it. Although there's something quite nice about the artwork that's uh, currently on it, but uh, anyway, this is um, this is quite an important cab. This is uh, well important in the in the sense that uh, this is actually a piece of uh, interesting piece of history. Uh, I've done some digging around, and these particular cabs um, were made by Data East Corporation, Deco. And these were actually the ones that had the Deco cassette system inside them originally. So, a lot of my people will know that um, that is where there was a, a three-layer board system, and it was hooked up to the monitor and everything, except instead of a, a regular game PCB that you'd have in, uh, like, the 16-1 that's showing at the moment, you'd have um, a cassette recorder system in the bottom, a cassette cartridge, and you'd stick a, from what looks on the net, by uh, what image I managed to find, <laughs> a regular sort of C90 looking style tape, uh, and if you use, uh, it was born after about uh, 1987, 1988, probably won't know what one of those is, um, and a bit people born in the, the millennium won't know what a CD is, because they're obsolete in those out as well, but um, yeah, in the bottom there used to be a cartridge and uh, sorry, a tape game, and basically you'd stick that in, and that'd load up into into the memory. So it's a bit like having a computer, and it just auto load off the tape and start up the game and stuff. And you'd see a loading screen, it count it down, and things like that. Now all the all the original hardware has been removed from this machine, and it was uh, well, the deco system was was removed from it. The original monitor is still in there, the original power supply is still in there, and the original loom and everything it's all been adapted a little bit over the years i think and you know it probably started its life out in an arcade and then probably ended up in a cafe and all the rest of it and it's been changed and changed and changed now this one is going to become a dedicated mr do machine um, uh, certainly all but it's certainly going to be good for a single player vertical game machine as well the monitor is actually quite nice and crisp although it does need some work doing on it i've got the 16 one cycling round on it as i do on pretty much all machines that pass straight into here um, but it needs some work doing uh, it's got some uh, height and width problems and I'm having some trouble on the monitor chassis locating the um, width and height controls for both vertical and horizontal I think I found the horizontal width um, but not the uh, not the vertical so we'll have to uh, We'll have to see what happens and I'll we'll have a bit of a muck around with it and everything at some other point. But this is just like, you know, it just arriving today and having a quick look around it. So what I love about this is it's got that early, late 70s, early 80s feel to it. Just completely. I mean, just, you know, from a, an arcade sort of, um, almost arcade pornography kind of look. It's got that wood grain effect. It's got the metal, metal slot coin doors. Um, you know, the drop down front door, the put the control panel. Let's have a look at the side. It's got, you know, wooden side wooden side panels. You know. But if you start having a look round, I don't think it's been covered this one. There's a lot of examples on on the internet that where it's been covered with uh, some heavy duty side art, some little scratches in there. Figure out a way to get rid of them over uh, over the course of the restoration. Tiny little scratch there. And a few other bits and pieces so as you can see if you look at the monitor you've got some serious color bleed stuff going on i can fix most of that out of it probably um i think it's uh, once the colors adjusting and the width issue on it isn't doing it any justice whatsoever um you'll see in a second if i start um if i start a game up like uh why was it really bad oh yeah pac-man just go into the demo mode. Oh, it's not doing it now. If I press the. Uh... Oh yeah, you can see there what it's doing. The joystick's completely utterly wrecked. I'm deliberately going to run into some stuff and die just to get the thing to shut up. But if you if you look over this right hand side here, and look what happens to Pac-Man as he goes up the screen. There, he's, he's all split and everything. Um, I think that's uh, to do, I think it needs a cap kit on it, but, uh, as well as a few other bits and pieces. 
Ah, oh, well, we run straight into the grass again. <laughs> Yay, game over. But um, you can see it's working. Let's just drop this front door down and, and have a look what's going on under here. You know, one of the things about this particular one, just release those cables from its evil clutches. Okay, you can drop the front door all the way down. It's even got almost like a uh, service panel type thing going on in there. There's a power on off switch and a degauss button that you can press if you press that one. Yeah, it degausses the monitor. Um, and then you've got a volume control, although I don't think anything's flowing through the amp on it. In fact, the volume's all the way down at the bottom. So I think there's a lot of stuff going to come out of this. Um, it seems a shame. I think, given the the state of the wiring and everything like that, I think it's definitely going to get uh, get a complete uh, rewire. Is the uh, is the machine, and I'm probably going to swap out the PSU as well. It, you know, it looks like it's probably solid, but as I'm going to put a game board on it that I absolutely love and don't want it to fail, I'm going to have to give it a brand new Jammer PSU. Unfortunately, um, the linear ones that are in a lot of these machines. I mean, this is, it looks like an early switch mode to me, but in a lot of the machines that you get, the uh, the linear ones, they're great and everything, but you just know they're gonna they're gonna overheat and there's usually that big cap on there that's gonna pop at some point and, and they're nice and easy to rebuild, sure. Um, you know what, 10, 15 components and you're good again. But um, it's if they if they go and the voltage regulation goes absolutely all over the place and it managed to shove sort of eight nine volts. You know, almost like Atari's AR2s uh, with a sense mod through your board and things like that. But uh, anyway, we're getting into quite a sort of tech rambling discussion. And, uh, you know, that's not what this video is specifically about. Um, I haven't got keys for the coin door at the bottom. The coin box, sorry. So I'm going to have to... Uh... Oh, quick look. I wonder if any traps in there. It won't let me shut that door. There we go. Um, obviously, I've got to fit a, fit a lock to it there. You know, the coin slots are in good condition, 20p pieces. So 20p one game, 50p another for three games. Um, that was pretty good. Uh, so obviously this was mid-80s last in service. I would have I would have hazarded a, a guess on it. I don't know quite what coins it's going to have taken through it. Um, vault box door down there. Don't have a key for. It looks like... It looks actually like somebody's already drilled the lock out of it. Um, I'll just grab a screwdriver, see if I can't open that thing. Nope, it's definitely still got a part of the lock in there. Anyway, so that's it. It's got uh, control panel's going to be a fair, fair doddle to change. Um, I've already had it in bits, uh, in case you can't quite tell. I've had, uh, I've had it out and onto the floor and split it down and stuff just once just to see how it comes apart. The joystick's absolutely shattered on it. Uh, it won't go, won't lock into the right direction, so I'm going to replace the joystick. Uh, the good thing about it is that this control panel is just one big long piece of perspex, uh, black and perspex, with a few holes drilled through it, and it anchors in these corners. What they've done is they've put some, they put some silicone glue underneath it just to keep it down to the metalwork, and looking at the metalwork behind it, um, it's... It's had some other stuff going on there. I don't know what the original layout would have been, but obviously they've done this this to cover some of the holes up. And for some reason, if you look here carefully, there's actually a round, there's a potentiometer underneath there. Um, but I haven't bothered looking at the value, but it's not connected to anything in the loom. I don't know what it's even there for, but hey, it's there. So I think somebody left it in just to uh, just to close a hole up. Well, then rather than putting a button blank, but all I need to do then is get um, some artwork done, uh, a couple of pieces of uh, a couple of pieces of perspex, sandwich the artwork between it, drill through, and uh, and uh, job should be a good one at that one. Um, what we're looking at here, probably that looks like two mil. So I'll increase it fractionally. It'll be uh, probably four mil by the time it's finished. I'll get them beveled uh, just so they, so it fits quite nicely. Um, but uh, I think it's going to uh, look quite a nice machine. We're going to we're going to um, take we're going to take the original Mister Do artwork, uh, which we've got scans of and things. And um, my pet peeve is that all these joysticks, all these machines were all put together with a joystick on the left hand side, which is 
great if you were, in my opinion, left-handed, but I'm not. I'm right-handed, and I play with the joystick in the right hand, and, uh, you know, so it needs to be ambidextrous, so the joystick's moving off that left-hand position in there, and it's going somewhere in the middle here. It just makes the cab look more finished by putting it in the middle as, as a single-player panel. You expect that's where the joystick should be. Uh, player buttons have got to move to the other side, because that's how the Mr. Do CP is. What's it? Um... I'd have to double check on the artwork, but hey, that's it. Um, let's just have a quick spin around the back and then uh, and see what's in there, show you what's at the back here. And uh, working, uh, it's a, a Sanwa 201100 monitor on that frame. Um, I have some spare monitors up there on the shelf so if I can't fix them on for some reason I can substitute something in either on the frame or onto or just adapt the cab to take a different frame slightly because it's uh, I had an empty um, Antrex frame in there uh, earlier and it's just that little bit slack for it but uh, but look at those struts and everything it could easily be read on to to fit it but uh, it's uh, got this huge big non-working fan on the back here and, and switch has been extended onto the inside of it and then there's all this sort of thing so I need to get a back door cut I'll get my my friend over at uh, the kitchen place to do that um, and uh, that's it so that is the uh, the newest arrival here at the RGP layer uh, it's beautiful data east corporation deco cassette system cab with um, which has currently got my 61 board, which I use as a test board, and it's uh, going to get a full conversion to Mr. Do. I'm going to do a series of videos on it, and um, just uh, keep uh, keep watching the channel. Um, now's a great time to go hit the subscribe button if you want to uh, keep up to date with uh, with this project and many other things going on, um, and uh, hit the like button if you like it. You know, and uh, please leave a comment, and uh, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.